What's up everyone and welcome back to another video in my updated Easter egg guide series where we combine cheat sheets, shortcuts, and just plain logic to beat every Easter egg in COD Zombies history. Today, we are doing Alpha Omega. A fairly simple quest, but I have some tips that'll help you with the hardest steps in this quest, as well as what to do if some of the steps glitch out. If this guide ends up helping you, then be sure to let me know by dropping a like and leaving a comment down below. Additionally, if you watch this guide and you're still having trouble with this quest, comment down below and I will try to help you out even further. But with that being said, let's jump straight into the class setup. For your perks, there's actually a couple things you could run here. You want to run Dying Wish and Victorious Tortoise for sure, and in your soda you could either run Stamina Up, Time Slip, or Winter's Whale, and in your modifier slot you could either run Stamina Up or Winter's Whale. If you want the biggest advantage possible, then I would recommend putting Time Slip in your Soda and Winter's Whale in your modifier, but you can do any of those combinations and you'll be fine. For your Elixirs, you want to run Anywhere But Here, Temporal Gift, Arsenal Accelerator, and Equipment. If you have Mega Elixirs and you don't mind wasting a couple, then Elixirs like Control z Undead Man Walking, Wall to Wall Clearance, those three Elixirs will help you out a lot in this Easter Egg. For your equipment, you want the Raid Fires. For your starting weapon, you want the Strife. And for your specialist, you want the Path of Sorrows. To beat this quest, you should get the Ray Gun Mark II, or if you want, you could get one of the Elemental Ray Guns, although that's not necessary at all. The free Ray Gun Mark II will be more than enough to carry through this Easter Egg. However, once again, if you want the biggest advantage possible, then I would recommend building like the Brain Rot Ray Gun or something like that, which I will cover in this video, by the way. For your secondary, you can either use the free weapon from the clock step, again, more on that soon, or you can get the Spitfire in the bottom of the greenhouse. And additionally, you'll want to get monkey bombs later on. I will tell you exactly when you should get them, because for a decent amount of the Easter Egg, the Wraith Fires are better to use. But again, more on that later. When you first spawn in, just stay in round spawn for the first four rounds, and on round four, save one to two zombies left, and then go turn on power, and do the lockdown in the generator room. After the lockdown, you need to unlock Pack-a-Punch by venting the four houses with Nova Gas in them. I'm breezing over this stuff because you should know how to do this, but while you're doing it, we need to get 6,750 points to buy Galvanuckles, as we need them for the first step in this easter egg. If you're running water wall clearance, then don't worry about this, you can just get them for 10 points in a little bit. But if not, while you're unlocking pack a bunch, if you turn the wheel one to two times, some super sprinters and jolting jacks will spawn. If you melee them with your stripe, you will get extra points, so be sure to do this as much as possible to get to Gavin Knuckles as soon as possible. After you drain all four vents, you should do a couple of things in the map while we have two zombies left. The first of which is building the zombie shield. Now of course, there's three parts with three locations each. Right now I'm showing you all nine spawn locations, so be sure to check them and when you have all three parts, make sure you build the shield in house B, or the greenhouse. This is important because you'll be here so much more often than the workbench in the APD room. Speaking of the APD room, let's get the teleporter pieces as well. Same thing as the shield, there's three parts with three locations each. There's a part in house D, there's a part in house B, and there's a part in the generator room where you did the lockdown. Grab all three parts and craft them on the workbench in the APD control room. The final thing you should do is get all the codes for the Atom unit. You can't input them quite yet, but we might as well do it while we're collecting everything else. To unlock the Atom unit, you need to get four codes. The first will always be the same, which is 7626. After that, you need to find three codes, the first of which is in the APD interrogation room. There's three locations that it can spawn and I'm showing you all of them now. After you find this code, either take a picture of it or write it down. Write down Sawyer and whatever the code is on the paper. The second code can be found in the APD control room. There's a code that can be found underneath this stack of papers. Shoot it and write down McCain and your code. The final part can be found in the yellow house, but first, go in the solitary room next to the APD room where you're at right now and grab this key. Now go upstairs in the yellow house and unlock this desk to reveal the Purnell code. So write Purnell in your code, and at this point you should have all four codes. One final thing, you can also start getting the parts for the ray gun kit. Now I say can because, as I already said, it is optional. You do not need this for the quest, as we will get a normal ray gun mark II fairly shortly. That is really good. But if you're in co-op, or even if you just want to build something different, then you can build this kit above Rushmore and make a ray gun variant. But again, it is not mandatory. 
At this point you can end the round and Rushmore will turn on. You can make your way to him in the E house or the operations room and interact with him to start the easter egg. After you interact with him now you can enter the atom codes. So the order you put them in is 7626 is first, then you put your Sawyer code, then your McCain code third, and finally the Purnell code. Input all four in that order, and then Adam will be available in the storage room. He is only free for the first time that you activate him though, and we do need him for an easter egg step, so if I were you, I wouldn't activate him until we're on that step. Speaking of codes, this is also a good time to mention that there are a few useful codes that you can actually type into Rushmore to help you in your game. For example, you can type in 7225 or PAC to spawn a free bonfire sale. Now with these, there are a few caveats. The first being you can only enter one of these codes in per round. These codes can only be entered once per game, so you can't enter Brew over and over again if you keep downing. And one last thing I need to mention, the last two codes have the same effects. Easy and new both work, but you can only use one in your game. So for example, if you use easy in your game, you will not be able to type noob for the rest of the game. But I wouldn't worry about either one because we will be using that for a very hard step later on in this Easter egg. But don't worry about any of these because this round we're going to type in 2265 or bank for a free 1000 points. And at this point, we should have enough points to buy the barrier and buy the Galvanoquas as well. After you purchase your Galvanoquas, you should also get a second gun so you can actually use them. Don't worry about anything fancy like that, just grab the Essex off the wall, it'll only be for this stuff. So purchase the Galvanoquas and then come down to the bunker and one of these four TV screens will be green in your game. We need to turn the TV on to proceed with the step, but before you do that, go in settings and turn on subtitles for this next step. When you find the TV, melee the zombie right in front of it with your Galvanoquas to turn it on. At this point, the computer system will say a letter along with a time. The letter represents one of the houses above ground, and the time represents the time that you have to put into that house. So for example, in my game it was A, 11 o'clock, so I would put 11 o'clock in the A house. Just make sure you remember the first time in the first letter that she tells you, because that's all you need thanks to this cheat sheet right here. There's six possible sets you could get, so whichever set's first time is the same as yours, that's the set that you need to input into the clocks. Here's all six clock locations, there's one in each house, and for the most part, they stick out like a sore thumb, so they shouldn't be hard to find in your game. Now how you can tell which houses are which, is if you look at the mailbox in front of the house, it'll have a letter on it. How you set a house's time, is you have to go to the clock in that house, and interact with it to turn the minute hand 15 minutes. Additionally, you can melee the clock to turn it a whole hour. When you input the time correctly, you should hear the computer system say that the clearance is granted. This will turn on the trap in that house. Additionally, in the prisoner holding and Rushmore houses, or houses C and E, instead of there being a trap, they'll give you free pack-a-punched weapons. House C can either give you a free swordfish, titan, mog, or ICR, and House E can give one player a free pack-a-punched ray gun mark II. But anyways, again, you have to input your sets times into all the houses, and after you input all five, go to the house that you haven't yet, or on his cheat sheet, the blank one, and interact with that clock. Doing so will make it start spinning on its own and eventually stop on a time. You need to remember this time and input it into Rushmore. So, for example, if the time was 7.15, then I would type into Rushmore 0715 and then click enter to finish the step. If he says something along the lines of, nope, I still don't trust you or something like that, then you have done this step correctly. After Rushmore stops talking, you need to speak to him again to start the next step. And just a heads up, if you ever need to know how far along you are with this quest, there are five light bulbs above Rushmore. These indicate all five core values that you have to pass. But for the first core value, you need to find a red Nova crawler and escort him to the transfusion facility, or House D. He always spawns in the bunker, but he has no true set spawn points. His most common spawn locations are in the generator room, in the storage room, in the diner, in the lounge, or in the bedroom. Check those locations and you should be able to find him. At this point you want to escort him to the D house. While you're doing this, make sure that you do not shoot him because if you do, he will die and you'll have to go to the next round to try this step again. So when you find him, take him to the solitary room and that exit will lead you right to house D. 
A lot of people have trouble with this step, but honestly, it's not that hard. To make sure that you don't kill the Nova Crawler, just hip fire at the zombies' heads with your pack to punch Dragon Mark II. And you shouldn't be able to shoot the Red Nova Crawler this way. Even when he stands up to shoot you, he still should be short enough to where you don't shoot him. Just to be sure you don't kill him though, try to avoid shooting on the steps in the solitary room unless you absolutely have to, because this part is a little dodgy with the hip firing, but once you're at house D, let him climb up in the barrier to finish this step. Now, there's a very small chance that he'll glitch out once he climbs in the barrier and he won't finish the step. So if that happens, unfortunately, you will have to kill him and redo it on the next round. But if that didn't happen and he climbed all the way up the stairs and Rushmore said, well done, you can go back to Rushmore and interact with him to start the second core value. At this point, if you want to get the Elemental Raygun Mark IIs, I suggest you doing so now. Due to my YouTube community page forcing me to, I am including how to build and upgrade all four Elemental Mark IIs in this video. If you don't want to upgrade them and you feel safe with just the normal Raygun Mark II, or if you already know how to build them, skip to the timestamp on the screen right now to proceed with the Easter egg. But for now, let's work on getting the Elemental Mark IIs. To do this, first you need the frames. And to get them, there is four TVs around the map that I'm showing you right now. One of them will be on in your game. Interact with it to turn it into a soul box. After I think it's seven kills, there will be a number on the screen. Write down that number, then go check the other three TVs that were not on. When you find the second one that's on, again, interact with it to start the soul box and charge it all the way to get the number on the screen. Do this for the last two, and when you have all four numbers, input the code into Rushmore and the order that you got the numbers in. And if done right, he'll reveal the Raygun Mark II frames to you. Before we begin, let me just say that all of these elemental ray guns can be pack-a-punched, and also they get a lot better when they're pack-a-punched. Let's start off now with the shotgun one. First, Get Firebomb on your gun. Then check these cabinet locations that I'm showing you right now. One of them will have red smoke coming out of it, or red mist. Shoot it with your Firebomb to reveal the canister. Pick it up, and now either the A, D, or E house's chimneys will have pink smoke coming from it. You have to line up a Wraith Fire throw to get it in. Here I'm showing you all the lineups for all the houses. It's worth noting here that while researching this video, I found multiple clips showing that you can just shoot the chimney with your Firebomb gun, and sometimes that'll get the step to work. However, I was not able to replicate this in my game. But, if you're having a lot of trouble with the Wraith Fire part, feel free to try this, and if you do, let me know the result in your game in the comments below. If somebody in the comments tells me that this works, I will leave a pinned comment down below confirming so. But after you make the Wraith Fire throw, go in that house, and at the bottom of the chimney, there will be more pink smoke. Interact with this to start a soul box. As long as you kill zombies while you're standing on the circle beneath you, the kills will count. And after around 20 kills or so, the circle beneath you will go away and you can pick up the canister and the chimney and pick up a Mark II frame and build the ray gun above Rush 1. The next we'll cover is the dual wield ray gun. So first, get cryo freeze on your gun and now check these three filing cabinets that I'm showing you right now. One of them will have a blue mist coming out of it. Shoot it and collect the canister and now go underground. At this point, there will be some zombies walking around with blue goop on them. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. You need to shoot these zombies to stop them and then knife them to kill them. If done correctly, that zombie will drop some blue goo. You need to collect three pieces of goo from three different zombies, and after you have all three, go to the APD control room and place the canister in this ether canister to start the soul box. Fill up the canister, and when the circle beneath you disappears, pick back up the canister, grab a Mark II frame, and build the ray gun above Rushmore. This one is dual wield when you pack a bunch of it. The third is the infinite ammo ray gun. So to start, get Kilowatt on your gun and head to the generator room and check these three locations to find a yellow spark. When you find it, shoot it with your Kilowatt gun and grab the canister. You now need to shoot five telephone poles to finish this step. There's a telephone pole behind the greenhouse, there's one in front of the greenhouse, there's one in front of the yellow house, there's one behind the transfusion facility, and there's one near Brew. Shoot it with your kilowatt gun until the electricity forms on top of the telephone pole. Do this for all five poles and eventually the electric current will all go to the generator in front of the yellow house. Now place the fuse in the generator and charge it up with kills until the circle beneath you disappears. When it does, you can pick back up the fuse from the generator, grab a Mark II frame, and build the Raygun Mark II above Rushmore. The final one, which is my personal favorite, is the explosion one. 
So get Brain Rot on your gun, and now one of these three dirt piles that I'm showing you right now will have a green mist in your game. You need to get Brain Rot to activate on a zombie when he's right next to the dig spot. If done right, he will dig it up. At this point, you can grab it, and now you need to find a yellow orb around the map. It always spawns at one of the teleporter locations, so take a look around for it. Right now, I'm showing you all the locations. If you find it, before you do anything, make sure that you have both teleporter pieces in your inventory. So make sure that you don't have either teleporter placed down, as we do need both for this step. When you do find it though, place down a teleporter beneath the orb and then shoot the orb. If done right, he will go through the teleporter and now you have to find him again. When you do, place the second teleporter beneath him, shoot the orb, and then this time, follow him through the teleporter. If done right, you can now go to the storage room and start the canister soul box. After the circle disappears, pick up the canister, grab a Mark II frame, and build the Raygun Mark II above Rushmore. Alright, welcome back people with your normal Raygun Mark IIs. We are on the second core value now. To start it, interact with Rushmore, and then go into storage room and activate Adam. Now go to the bunker entrance that will lead to the diner, or the bunker entrance in the backyard of the greenhouse, and melee this door to talk to Marlton from the Victus group. Eventually, the Atom unit will catch up to you and will start talking to scare Marlton into giving you the ether canister. Pick it up and then place it here in the transfusion facility. Now go back to Rushmore and talk to him to start step 3. For the third core value, you will need the teleporters. So make sure that you pick up both teleporters if you placed any down, and place one in these spots. Place one next to Brew, and then place one next to the power switch, as that will make this next step 10 times easier. Now go to the power room and you'll see this server. The goal at this point is to get a jolting jack to shoot this server. The easiest way to spawn one is by hanging out in the backyard of the houses, and one will spawn pretty quickly. When he does, go back to the power room and stand in front of the server box and get him to shoot you. If done right, you can interact with the server and the green lights beneath the server will start counting down. As soon as you grab it, you have 10 seconds to bring it to Rushmore before it overheats and you have to redo it. So as soon as you interact with the server, run through the teleporter to come out by brew and then continue on the path that I'm showing you and put the server in the available slot before the green lights turn off and you should be good. If you're taking too long still at this point, you can also use the dash ability on your sword, the level 2 ability, or you can use your stamina modifier, but neither are necessary to complete this step. When you put in the server, we now need to get brain rot on our gun. So go to Rushmore and enter the code 7225 or pack to spawn a free bonfire sale. Make sure you activate Temporal Gift before you grab it to double its length. Once we get Brain Rot, there's three codes around the map that we have to collect and give to Rushmore. Here's the locations for the three codes. They're in the same three spots every single game, so there's nothing to worry about here as far as spawn locations go. The codes are covered up by painting, so you need to use Brain Rot on a zombie or use Control Z if you ran that to get the zombie to swipe the painting off the wall, revealing a code. Once you get the code, write it down or take a picture of it or something like that to remember it and then go do the other two. Once you have all three codes, save one zombie left, and then you can go and put all three codes into Rushmore. You can then put these three codes in whatever order you want. You don't have to put them in a certain order or anything like that. When the zombie catches up to you, bring them outside the house and get Winter's Row to freeze them so you can go back and input the rest of the codes. Once you type all three codes in, you can interact with Rushmore again, but this time he'll start a core value, but then he, along with the rest of the power in this map, will get shut down. Your job here is to turn the power back on, which obviously it's not as simple as just hitting the power switch. There's six switches that you could interact with in the bunker. There's one in every single room in the bunker except for the APD control room. So right now I'm showing you all the locations where they can spawn. When you find one, take a look at this cheat sheet and match the switches in your game. So for example, if you're in the generator room, then this switch would need to be up. If it's already correct, then just ignore it and go to the next switch. Eventually, you will hit one and all six lights will turn green, and at this point, you solve the puzzle. So now, you can go back to the power switch and turn it back on to finish the step. Now, go back to Rushmore and interact with him to start the fifth and final core value. After Rushmore stops talking, there will be three robots around the map with partially detached heads. Here's all the locations that I'm showing you right now. There is six locations in total, or more specifically, there's one behind the A house, B house, C house, and D house, and then there's one in the diner and lounge areas. When you find one at one of these locations, look and see if there's a blue light sparking in the robot. 
If there is, then that's the one that you have to do right now. But if there isn't one, then that's one that you will have to do later on. Before you interact with it though, make sure you have your guns fully pack a punch and you have a full shield and your perks. And additionally, at this point, I would recommend you getting the monkey bombs out of the mystery box as well. But getting back to the step, locate the robot with the blue light and interact with him. You now need to survive in this area for anywhere between 45 seconds and a minute. The easiest way to do this is just to spam your Raygun Mark II everywhere. You can additionally throw monkey bombs if you want, and you can also use your sword if you have it available. This is time based, not kill based, so you don't have to kill anything if you don't want to. But it's also worth mentioning here that if you get overran and you think that you're gonna die, you can use anywhere but here to get out of there but if you do then you will have to redo that specific lockdown so there is a penalty with doing that but then again that beats down you know but after around a minute or so the barriers will go away and so will the robot but where the robot was there will now be an arm pick it up and now we have one of the three robot parts that we need i should also mention at this point that if you ever need ammo don't forget that you can sometimes get a max ammo to spawn in the yellow house shed. So if you need one, make sure to check in there for a max ammo. So now find the second one. Again, same as before, when you find the blue light robot, interact with him to start the challenge. And just a tip, if you end up getting the sea house or the prison facility, I recommend staying back here where I am and watching in front of you while throwing monkey bombs. Zombies will spawn behind you here, but it doesn't happen terribly often. So this is a decent way to deal with the hardest lockdown. When the second one is finished, again, grab the robot arm where the robot originally was, and then head to the final one in your game. After you complete the third one, the robot will drop its head. Pick it up and now go to the APD interrogation room and place the robot parts on this half-complete mannequin. This will give you a white flash along with some dialogue. At this point, I would go to Rushmore and type in, but do not enter yet, the code for the undead man walking. But wait to click enter until zombies start spawning again. Now on the final step before the boss fight. There's an orb somewhere in the map that you have to find and escort. Here's the three locations where it can spawn. When you find it, make sure that you stay close to him at all times because if he gets too far away from you for too long, he will despawn and you have to end the round and then look for him again on the next round without an undead man walking. So you want to do this step correctly the first time. But with saying that, as long as you don't fail, Doing this step with an undead man walking is really easy. Just follow the orb and eventually it'll get back to the APD interrogation room and go to the mannequin. At this point, we are ready for the boss fight. So get all your perks, get a full shield, get a max ammo, and this is your last chance to get the monkey bombs as well. When you're ready for the boss fight, interact with Rushmore one final time and then come down to the APD control room and interact with this computer. At this point, the shield will be on the workbench in this room for the rest of the game. So if you ever need a new shield for whatever reason, make sure you come back and get one. The first part of this boss fight is to just fill up the soul canister. You can kill the zombies anywhere, except for the hallway that leads to storage. When you fill up the canister, all the robots will despawn and the Avogadro will come out of the APD. Now at this point, a pretty nice cutscene-ish moment will happen. And after the nukes drop, spoiler alert, go in this hallway to get a head start. Now, as soon as the door opens, go to the storage room and interact with this soul canister to start charging it. Whenever you do this during the boss fight, the Avogadro will automatically teleport to you. Now, speaking of teleporting to you, in this fight, he has three attacks. His first attack is to stun you. You know he's doing this attack when he makes this sound. He mostly does this attack when he's teleporting to you after you start charging a soul canister. If he actually hits you with this, then he will disable your weapons for about 5 seconds. His second attack is just shooting at you, which is his most common attack, and this attack does 100 damage to you. Now is probably a good time to mention that if he traps you in a corner or something, you can always shoot the Avogadro, and as long as he's not in the middle of an attack, you can actually stun him for a couple seconds. And finally, the third attack he can do is a charge up attack, which is easily his hardest hitting attack. When you hear this sound, immediately pull out your shield because he will charge at you in about a second after that sound, dealing 150 damage to you, leaving you one hit to the robots. But if you're fast enough, you can actually block these attacks if you have Victorious Tortoise. You can block all of his attacks just by pulling out your shield. 
But getting back to the boss fight itself. To beat this boss fight, we have to fill up a soul canister in the four different areas in the bunker, and then get the Avogadro back in the APD. When you interact with the soul canister in the storage room, the Avogadro will automatically teleport to you. At this point is when you should throw your monkey bomb. So shoot the Avogadro to stun him, throw a monkey bomb, and then kill the zombies attracted to it. And then when the monkey bomb blows up and zombies start spawning again, you just repeat the process until you beat this phase. If you don't have monkeys, just run around this area and just spam your Mark II with the zombies and use your sword as much as possible. You get a max ammo and a carpenter after each of the four soul canisters that you fill up. So don't worry about conserving ammo or anything like that. Just spam your ammo everywhere. Also, you want to be killing zombies at all times because when you're not killing anything, the progress that you've made on the soul canister will start to deplete. If the charge in the canister empties all the way, then it'll be disabled for around 20 seconds. So if this ends up happening in your game, just go to one of the other soul canisters in the map and fill up that one, and then when you're done with that one, go back to the one that was disabled and finish it. So do one of the strats that I told you to, and eventually a max ammo and a carpenter will spawn in the entrance to the generator room. Grab it and get out of that room as soon as possible. I say this because the Avogadro will soon start shocking the room that you just filled up. And this goes without saying, but obviously if you stay in that room too long, he will kill you. Speaking of shocking things, now is also a good time to mention that if you ever need Pack-a-Punch or you need to buy your soda or your tonic because you went down, first have to interact with it to take away the electricity that will deal damage to you when you do so, and then you can interact with it again to get whatever you need. So now go to the next one, which I like to do the lounge next. Activate the soul canister right next to Ted, and if you have monkeys, do the same strat as last time. If you aren't running monkey bombs, the best way to survive in this room is to just try and keep him behind this chimney so he can't attack you. So when he starts coming up the right side of the chimney, just run to the left side to try and bait him behind the chimney again, and then run away from him again. Just keep doing that over and over again. Also, don't forget that you can stun the Avogadro, and I recommend you doing that as much as possible. Eventually, the max ammo and the carpenter will spawn outside of the lounge, grab him and get out of that room and stay out of it for the rest of the game. The third soul canister is in the diner. It's right here where I'm showing you, so activate it and then kill the zombies. Now, if you have the monkey bombs, do the same thing as before, but if you don't, what I like to do is I sit on one side of the diner and kill zombies while waiting for the Avogadro to catch up to me. And when he turns the corner to shoot me, I stun him and then I run to the other side of the diner and then I repeat that until I finish the soul canister. When you fill up the third one, grab your drops and go to the soul canister in the beds and start charging it up. This one is the easiest one to do since the area is so open. You can just train in here normally, even with the Avogadro here. When you fill up the one in beds, grab your drops and at this point we need to get the Avogadro back in the APD. Now you can just bully him from here and just shoot him from beds back into the APD control room, but the easier and the safer thing to do is to just go to the APD control room and wait for him to follow you. And when he's in this room, shoot him towards the door for the APD that he already came out of, and after enough bullets and you get him close enough, he will get sucked up back into the APD and the door will close behind him. There is just one more step in this easter egg that you have to do, which is coming back to this computer and interacting with it to teleport him to transit, and then after you do that, go back to the APD door and it'll open, revealing the elemental shard. When you pick it up, you will get the cutscene, and with that, you have successfully completed the Alpha Omega Easter Egg. I hope I was able to help you out with this guide. If I did, be sure to let me know by dropping a like and commenting down below. Again, if you're still having trouble with this guide after watching this video, comment down below and I will try to help you out even further. This was the penultimate entry in my BO4 updated Easter Egg Gods, so that means that we only have one Easter Egg left to cover in this game, which is of course, Tagged or Toten. Now, I'm just going to be completely honest with y'all. That one's going to take me a little bit of time to put together because unlike just about every other map in this game, I don't know much about this map because, quite frankly, I don't like it. Give me around a month or so to learn the ins and outs of the map and all the speedrun shortcuts and everything like that, and we will be back with the Tagged or Toten 2023 Easter Egg God. If you want more Easter egg gods though, click the playlist that's on the screen right now. It'll take you to the ones I've already done, which is everything in BO4, except Tag and Garad Krovi. If you don't want more Easter egg gods, why don't you click this video on the screen where I discuss the best zombies map in every single Call of Duty. Thank you guys so much for watching, and with that being said, this is Jolts, signing out. Peace!